Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming $5,000 Modern Open here at Apex Con in sunny Caldwell, Ohio. I'm Todd Tandy Anderson, joined by Ross Merriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. We got four rounds down, three more Swiss to bring you, and the top eight all coming at you in the next few hours. Don't leave your seats. We got round number five coming up. Ross, give us a rundown. So this is going to be a likely winning in for our players at uh, 5-0. and Going to hope to get a double draw. Uh, leading off, we have Ryan Hayes playing at Just Guy Control. We saw him uh, make a pretty deep run yesterday, but uh, and into the elimination rounds, right? And then lost in the quarterfinals, I believe. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so trying to run it back today, do a little bit better. and he got clapped by Fumich, I believe. Yeah. Uh, well on his way to uh, the back-to-back -to -back top eight is Ryan, and his opponent, Eric Rose, is going to be on Mardu Energy. Now, we've d typically seen the Just Guy decks play quite well yeah. in uh, these matchups, but looking at Eric Rose's list... He has a unique card choice that might help him a lot against control, and that is Obnixilis the Adversary. His Mardu deck generates a lot of extra bodies to sacrifice, so you can get two Obnixiluses going pretty easily with that casualty ability, uh, and either start pumping out tokens or really attacking the control player's hand. So I uh, really like these Obnixiluses alongside the typical Orcish Bowmasters and Chthonian Nightmares. Uh, looks like they're taking the place of Fable, another strong card in the control matchup. Right. Only one Fable in the list, but... Uh, I'll be interested to see how Obnixilis plays in this matchup and if he can, uh, if Eric can change the fortunes of these Mardu energy decks against Jeskai Control. Alrighty, well, the players are ready and situated in the feature match area. So without further ado, let's head on down to watch round number five. All right, we're underway. Turn on Guide of Souls here. Just how you draw it up for the energy play player. Yeah, hoping to follow that up with an Ocelot Pride so we can start making some 1-1 one -one tokens. We haven't seen a whole lot of Ocelot Pride on the battlefield the last two days. This brand new one drop from Modern Horizons 3 is quite powerful. While it does have one toughness and falls in the face of things like Renin 6 and uh, Orcish Bowmaster, similar to Raghavan, it does usually generate a token before it dies, and that's quite powerful. That's enough for you to stomach dying to one of those value pings. And here is Ocelot Pride. Let's see if Ryan has a response. If not, it's going to be a lot of pressure very quickly, and he's going to need uh, one of those Wrath of the Skies to take care of this battlefield that's going to go wide. Yeah, Eric will get up to three energy here. Uh, it's two energy. Uh, make multiple tokens, gain a little bit of life, and is halfway to the City's Blessing as well. we get the spotter to get the uh, energy token on the table for us, we'd appreciate it. I know we have two from the Guide of Souls. It's going to be very important here over the course of the game. Ryan declining a solitude with the Surveil Off Meticulous Archive. Looking for something better against this Y battlefield. There we go. The prismatic ending at the top of the hand. Yeah, we could just fire that off, blast the Guide of Souls or the Ocelot Pride. I think I see a Teferi, a Counterspell. Yeah, Counterspell's often weak against these very quick starts from Boros. And I think this is what you were really missing the last couple times we watched Boros. was, Or, I guess it's Mardu technically, but it's all the best cards are Boros cards. Yeah. yeah we've often seen the aggressive energy decks get off to kind of slow starts. That is not what they're looking to do. Eric, instead of having a, a very fine opening on the first couple turns, and gets to untap with that Ocelot Pride. The attack with lifelink is going to mean he'll generate another token on his end step. Yeah, quickly fetches the third land also, so very likely a powerful card coming, whether it's Flage or Obnixilis. Yeah, an Obnixilis casualty with the first token would be very strong here. Yeah, Ryan Hayes' deck is not adept at dealing with Planeswalkers, that's a couple of Galvanic Discharges, but that's about it. Here is the Obnixilis. We're going to make two copies of Obnixilis, the Planeswalker. Let's get this one. <laughs> Ryan's on like, I haven't seen this one in a while. Well, let's read it and see what's going on. Yep. So we're going to get a clone of the Obnixilis. It's going to have loyalty on it equal to the casualty. And it was a 1-1 sacrifice, so it will be 1. And the original one can minus to make a token, and the other one can plus to start uh, doing some braining and draining. Looks like we are going to force the negation the original, but that does not stop casualties, so we can just tick up and force a discard or a drain for two.
I wish we would just pull it out of the sleeve or something and put it on the table. Backwards card is a bit awkward. It's an Opnix list. There we go. I'm gonna. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> just... All right, fetch. Ryan here. Maybe this is Flage to deal with the other Opnix list. That'd be a nice comeback after being down. The Force Negation, obviously an excellent tempo play for Ryan, but down on resources because of it. Yeah, he's going to need to find some way to recoup that card advantage. Doesn't even give a care about the Obnixilis, says. I'll just take two a turn. I think he's set up to deal with that Obnixilis next turn when he escapes the Flage. So yeah. can afford to just take two damage rather than let Eric get another token with the Ocelot Pride. I'm going to start off here with Amped Raptor. Going to get two energy. And then look at the top card. Discharge. So we're just going to gain three more energy up to seven. Attack for one. Do you play anything else? Tick up the Omnixilis. Ryan says go. All right, land. Oh my god, it's the oh. Arena of Glory 2. Insult to injury. Here comes Big Papa Flage. Yeah, kill the Amp Raptor with the first trigger, then attack. Kill the Obnixilis with the second trigger. Eric will take six. Ryan will gain six. And. Doing full clear. Attacking oh. Obnixilis and killing the token okay. with the ability. Saying that I'm going to be high enough life total with this Flage. I'm good to just clear your board. Your static prison is going to take care of the flage for just a little while, just nine turns. Yeah, but the damage has been done there. Yeah. There's a Johnny, a nice follow up from Eric Rose, answering the flage and putting some more pressure. Green of Glory unexerts, but it's going to stay tapped for this turn. Another flage picked up for Ryan Hayes, so we can use that to knock off the Johnny before it can flip into a planeswalker. Yeah, and for as strong a start as Eric Rose had, Ryan cleaned it up just as easily. All right, quick cycle. Uh, Lauren Revealed, going to go get an island. Probably a basic, because I think we're just going to go land Flage. That is what we're going to grab. Yeah, Flage it down the Ajani, and Ryan will be back up to 21. All that damage Eric did early, completely undone by these Flage triggers. Turns right. out, playing two, one or two Lightning Helixes every turn for three turns straight is pretty good. <laughs> against the old red-white aggro deck. Yeah. I see a counterspell in Ryan's hand, so... He's just going to hope that Eric finally has run out for a turn so he can untap and have the counter shield up. And failing after that, just needs to either fill his graveyard for this flage or find a copy of the One Ring to take full control of this game. One thing I will note for Eric Rose's list relative to some of the other energy decks we've seen, not as much removal. No lightning bolts, just four discharge and three static prison. So he has a lot higher threat density than some of the other Boros and Mardu energy decks. And that will also serve him well in this matchup. All right, looks yeah. like we're playing another Obnix list, the adversary. This is going to make two cop or one copy. And so we get to go minus for a devil, or we can just go plus plus. Because the cat token was a 2-1, the copy will start on 2 loyalty this time. Nice. All right, going to go back to Hayes. Draws a force negation, so a couple counter spells going to be left over after this flage. That'll deal with the copied Obnixilis. Three cards in graveyard. It needs three more to escape one of those flages. All right, Guide of Souls. Let's see if we tick down or up. I would like to get some more creatures onto the battlefield, but he likes to... Wow, I'm going to discard. Life totals can't be correct here if he's discarding Force Negation instead of taking two. Our spotter no. is being distracted by a judge right I, now. We'll get that. I think you just... Ryan just wants to fill his graveyard, and he realizes there's not a lot of targets for Force Negation in that deck, especially after two Obnixiluses have already been played. What's the plural of Obnixilus? Obnixiluses. It's not Obnixili? No. Uh, what if, what that would conjug... that be two Obnixilus? Mm, it could be it could be unchanged. But it, it's not a real word. It doesn't have to follow any established rules of grammar. Yeah, but the neither U, do my jokes. The US to I conjugation only happens for a certain second declension Latin nouns. Mm. And Omnicolus isn't even a US, it's an IS. 
Thanks, Ross. All right, here's the orchid bow. Thank you. I said thanks. That's wow. been that's been your daily grammar lesson. Thank you. Learn something new every day. That's why everybody is tuning in. That and all these sweet, sweet Obnixilus straws. All right, big attack here coming for Eric Rose. Just for three, but we're going to pump it up with the Guide of Souls. And we're going to pump the Guide itself to get it out of range of the... Yeah, uh, with, all the, with all the energy Eric had lying around, this, this Guide is pretty threatening. Yeah. I'm a little surprised it didn't meet Ryan's standards for a counterspell. And a flage from Eric Rose, and if you're Hayes, you gotta just say, okay. Get another energy. He's gonna go to the graveyard and be scary next turn, but I believe Ryan will be able to escape flage. He'll go get one of his surveil lands, and if as long as he 100% puts in the graveyard, he can do the Arena of Glory, flage, do some serious damage, and still have Counterspell on, on backup. Yeah, and that's why Ryan waited turn. He could have fetched on his own turn and tapped out for the flage. But wants to hold up the counter spell. Wouldn't be surprised to see all six of the Flage's damage go at the Guide of Souls, and then the Flage itself attack down the Omnixilis, leaving just Orcus Bowmasters. And then counter spell on Flage from the graveyard from Eric is probably going to be the move. Yeah, I like that line as well. So Ryan just has to be careful to leave up double blue for his counter spell, and is. Uses the steam vents for red to feed into the arena. The other two lands produce white. Yeah, we will exert. Now yeah. the flage has haste. You're exert. definitely attacking down the Obnixilis. The only question is, do you deal with both halves of the Bowmasters or the Guide? And I think the Guide is much more threatening. All right, six to the Guide, six to the Obnixilis. Board mostly under control for Haze and back up to 13. Going to send it back Eric Rose's way. Does have flage in the graveyard. That one can come back here. Static Prison, paid for, down to 6 energy. Two-point attack for Rose. Here's a Flage. Excellent on any 5. Deck doesn't care much about the mm -hmm. graveyard. Is that 5 triggers of Flage now for Ryan Hayes in this game? Yeah. In a game where he's at 11? Because he cast it initially and he's returned it twice with Arena both times? I think he's cast multiple Flage and returned with oh, Arena yeah. multiple times. Yeah, he's got a Flage in Exile that got Exile that. So six six Flage triggers, and he's at eight life. Is that good or bad? Yeah. Really, I think this game is the power uh, of the Arena of Glory. That the hasted Flage was important both times to contain Eric's battlefield. Without the Arena, I think Ryan loses this game pretty easily. Okay, so three cast Flages and then two from the graveyard with haste. So, what's that? How many is that? One, two, three. That four, would five, be seven. Six. So it's tw he's gained twenty-one life this game, at least. I think twenty-four now that he's attacked with this flage again. This flage is fine. I'll take three. Or did he say three to the flage? Maybe he has a lightning bolt in hand. Nope. Okay. Back to haze. Dueling flages. Zap your creatures. Attack you for a bunch. Uh, he's up to 10. Rose going to fall to 16. Run out of life, Bad Ross. And he's still with that counterspell in hand, so he has full control of this one. I'd like to maybe see in main phase tune the narrative just to dig for the One Ring. One Ring here would almost certainly put it out of reach. A raucous Theater fetched for Eric Rose. See what he can find. Another static prison? But the, Ryan has the counter spell. Yeah. Maybe he baits with Flage from Graveyard. If it gets countered, then goes for static prison. Something like that. Well, finds a card that he likes. Okay. Is this the one you counter, Ryan? That's the question. It's, pr it's pretty juicy with Eric only having two other cards in the graveyard. And yeah, Ryan's reaching for his lands. Oh, it's, it's a, a subtlety. subtlety. I thought okay. it was a tune. My, my fault, my fault. That'll work very well against Flage. Yeah. Probably leave it on top and answer the subtlety. Okay. Here we go. Attack for 12. So Eric going to fall to 3. Ryan will go to 13. And a 
Wrath of the Skies for one. That's going to kill the Flage and deal the last three points. Eric Rose defeated. <laughs> Ryan Hayes wins game number one. Yeah, That's the best kind of counterspell, the one that stays in your hand the entire game. Never <laughs> even needed it. All right. Well, as these players reach for their sideboard for some help, I'm going to ask Ross, how would you sideboard if you're in the Mardu Energy seat and you just lost to a million Flages? Well... I'm looking at the sideboard. There's the Gigantic as a companion, one Damping Sphere, four Harsh Mentor, one Nile Spellbomb, two Obsidian Charma, two Sun Cleanser, one Surgical Extraction, one Unlicensed Hearse, and two Wear Tear. Really not much you want to bring in. Maybe you bring in the Graveyard Hate just to answer these Flages, because that was the you know key card for Ryan uh, throughout that game. Hearse is at least, you know, can be a threat eventually. The Surgicals are a little worse, but dealing with Flage permanently or dealing with the One Ring you know, there's only so many uh, you know, late game haymakers that the Just Guy deck has. Uh, and if you're planning to grind through all the removal, maybe taking them out of the deck uh, can be effective because uh, even though Eric Rose has less removal than most of the other energy decks, you're still going to want to cut some of it against the control deck, you know, trim down on these Galvanic Discharges for sure. All right, on the other side of things, I've seen what Ryan is bringing in, actually. He's already cut four copies of Counterspell and two Force of Negation, but oh. what is coming in, Ross? I, I should say, actually, these Sun Cleansers are also definitely coming in. Okay. Stopping Wrath of the Skies is so important. Yeah, sun I Cleanser agree. does that, also stops Galvanic Discharge. Uh, for Ryan Hayes, he has two Celestial Purge, three Consigned to Memory, two Dranath Magistrate, an Invert Polarity, three Obsidian Charma, two Soul Guide Lantern, and two Supreme Verdict. Two Purge, two Verdict, two Soul Guide? Thoughts? Um, I don't think the opposing Flages are nearly as big of a problem for Ryan as they are for Eric Rose. Sure. So I'm not a fan of Soul Guide Lantern. I definitely like Verdict. Purge... I think there's enough targets. The Obnixilis in particular, being able to take that off the battlefield is nice, and Exiling Flage. So, yeah, I think the Purges will come in as well. All right. Well, as these players shuffle up here for game number two, I'd like to take this time to say thanks to our sponsors for this weekend's events. Ghost Energy keeps us energized and hydrated on these long tournament weekends. Check out Ghost Energy drinks. SpiceRack.gg. SpiceRack is a brand new piece of tournament software that we've been partnering with for our last few events. And we... Quite enjoy it, and I think that your local game store would enjoy it too, so make sure to tell them about Spice Rack GG. Ultimate Guard. Ultimate Guard is the industry leader when it comes to TCG supplies, from the Boulder Deck Box to the Katana Sleeves. Check your local game store for Ultimate Guard products today. And lastly, thanks to Wings Etc. Grill and Pub. Family-friendly place to go uh, eat dinner and watch some basketball on the TV. Ross and I were doing last night. Okay, game number two. Eric Rowe is going to be on the play. Marsh Flats pass. No one drop. Had a bevy of one drops in the previous game, but all that early damage undone by Flage. Imagine we will see an elegant parlor or a raucous theater here. Oh, no. Has the third one. Shadowy Backstreet. I think they're going to unban Ura. No. Why not? Flage might be better. They kill stuff, man. Killing stuff's wild. I don't know. That's all I'm saying. As someone who uh, loves to play little red creatures, Uro was kind of a nightmare to play against, but I haven't really had to do that against Flage yet, but I can't imagine that it's very fun. Yeah, it's real good against creatures. I'll give you that. We've been watching it mow down creatures all day. Yeah. It, the combo with Arena of Glory is really nice, and that is an edge it has on Uro. If Ryan didn't have the arena, I think he loses game one. Yeah, it's a good point. All right, no play here for Rose on two, but that probably means that he's just going to play Orcish Bowmaster. So Ryan here, thinking about what he wants to do, maybe just fetch Surveil Lands. I do see one of those sideboard Supreme Verdicts in Ryan's hand. He's a little landlight, though, I think. He kept a tune, the narrative. Oh, I'm, I'm mistaken. He has plenty of lands. They're just all on the left side of the hand. So, <laughs> gonna fetch a different land. It's Sacred Boundary. Love it. Because he doesn't have an elegant parlor, and he needs red and the second white, I bet. Upkeep, Bowman, zap you. Bzz. Rose down to 16 from the fetch shock. Hayes down to 19 from the ping. 18 from the ping after the fetch. Okay. 
A's has a land in play. Let's see if he wants to deal with this Bowmaster. Bowmaster not too threatening here. As long as you have the land drops to get to Verdict, we'll likely just want to clean it up with the Sweeper. Gets plain, so not planning on casting Counterspell anytime soon. I think we cited those out. I think this is why he's doing this. It's morphed into Boros Control. Yep, just two Boros decks flaging each other back and forth forever. Here's an Aether Hub. Attack for one. And I think this is Opnixie time. Okay. Ryan oh, does well. decide to use a spot removal spell on the Bowmaster. All right, here's Opnixilis and his brother. Will we just tick up forever, or will one finally make a token? Nope. Tick up. Tick up. We're going for the jugular. Damage only. When you have two, it's really nice to just double tick up and deal four a turn. Ryan's already down to 12. Pretty soon he's going to have to start discarding. Yeah, I think making a token will eventually just deal more than two damage. Because if it dies, you also just get to deal one. The life gain matters a little bit in the, like, Flage Racing situations. It's obviously not that important against the control deck, but it could come up. Ryan fetches down to 11. Got Space Skyland. Well, you know there's not Flage this turn unless he's got Mystic Gate or uh, what's the, uh, Cascade Bluffs in hand. The main phase, tune the narrative. Maybe that means we're going to be seeing... Galvanic Discharge to take care of one of these Flages. Or not Flages. Uh, one of these uh, Omnixilis. The Celestial Purge for the original. Okay. Here you go. Now this one's only going to be up at 3 when it ticks up, so this one can get knocked on by a Flage. Ryan now down to 11. Thinking about going to 9 or maybe discarding one of these Superfluous Spells. Takes the 2. Here's a Guide of Souls. Another God of Souls. That'll bring Eric to two energy. And a life. I go back to Ryan Hayes' way. Fetch line pass could suggest another Bowmasters. But no, I think the hand is just land flage for Eric Rose. Yeah, but I think the land is the good one. Arena of Glory? I think so. All right, Hayes now with a grip full, nine life, facing down two guides and a planeswalker. See what the move is. Going to fetch with Flooded Trand. Can't get an island. I guess he can't get an island, but I doubt he'll get an island. Planes number two. Here's Verdicts out of the sideboard. Okay. Two guides down. In a turn, we're going to fetch. Pretty quick fetch here. Probably going to go get a Surveillian, Elegant Parlor. Rockus, Rockus Theater. Theater. Okay. So he's at eight life. Rose has three direct damage with the Flage. There's your Elegant Parlor, Todd. Oh, yeah. Put, put it, it right in the graveyard. Down. And draws worse elegant parlor, <laughs> otherwise known as Sacred Foundry. Uh, that's funny, but maybe true. Is this is where Ryan decides to start discarding cards. If only he had his own flage to discard. Yeah. Okay, sends Hallow Fountain to the graveyard and. Eric shows Ryan the flage. It's going to put him to 5. Eric will go up to 19. And with Arena of Glory, it'll be lethal next turn if Ryan doesn't have an answer. I think it's Arena of Glory. I'm not positive. There's Prismatic Ending on the Obnixilis. Oh, what's that? Soul Guide Lantern, Ross? What's that? Soul Guide Lantern and it wins the game? That was very good there. Oh, yeah. Here's, but... here's Worse Elegant Parlor. The, uh... <laughs> He's what if a... we should just be playing less 
Shocklands now. Two Sacred Founders seems like a lot in this Mardu deck. He's well, he's got three. Ooh. Oh, I thought the I think the Arid Mesa was what I thought was the Haste Land. It's not. Okay, no Reign of Glory. We have an Ocelot Pride and a Gigantha in hand. Now we're gonna go back to Ryan's way. One ring. Yeah, but Ryan's at, Ryan's, yeah, Ryan's at five. He's got a Solitude as well, but I don't think there's a fifth land. He discarded the Hallowed Fountain earlier to that Obnixilis activation. Ryan Sweat and Bullets. He can't just play the One Ring as protection from Ocelot Pride, and then that means that we don't allow one one to be created. And does decide to draw a card, finds a subtlety. So hand is subtlety, solitude, galvanic discharge for Ryan Hayes. He's gonna want to find a time, woo, time to establish the subtlety. Wow, and... I think this is also life loss and not damage. So oh, yeah. wondering, not effective at stopping the Obnixilus here. We're gonna tick up. This is the third. Is this the third Obnixilus or the second? I believe it's the third. Or at the very least, this it's the fourth, actually. Because <laughs> it's been split in two. Split in twain. All right. Well, we discard. Subtlety and Solitude keeps the discharge because he needs now he needs to answer the Obnixiluses. And his own ring. So this is a tight spot for Ryan Hayes. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to get out of it, but I've seen crazier things happen. There's a Celestial Purge. The so Purge and dis Discharge will take care of the two Planeswalkers. And there's a Solitude. But Solitude's going to be a little slow. He's already down to four. So he's dead in two turns from the ring. Doesn't have time to draw fifth land, cast the Solitude, and then untap to attack with it. All right. Well. Need, it needs Flage. We can just ignore the Obnixilus and just always discard. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have... The Obnixil is covered. The One yeah. Ring beats gimmicky Planeswalkers. Yeah, I think this is going to be dig for Flage time. Yeah, maybe Flage, maybe just any way Oof. to get the ring off the table, but I, it might just have to be another One Ring now to protect from the Gigantha and the Guide. We're down to two. The Fetch puts us down to one if we want it, and we probably want it. Yeah, One Ring into Flage. And Ryan's going to draw four cards to find the ring, and then see a fifth card that could also be Flage. We'll likely get a Surveil Land here, and yeah, certainly a red one to give him a second red source. There's Thundering Falls. Also could technically crack the Soul Guide Lantern, since we have the fifth land, so we got quite a few looks. Yeah, that looks like a subtlety, and definitely not good enough. Yeah. Ryan goes to one on the upkeep. Draw for turn. So white card, Wrath of the Skies. We can two mana Wrath of the Skies, blow up the board. Start with drawing three cards because we got to get rid of the ring. It's indestructible, so Wrath of the Skies doesn't stop it. <gasps> we found the ring. And a Teferi. Yeah, I think we got to do the ring this turn, and the next turn we blow up the board. And I think we just. Can we do both? Oh yeah, my that's god, a mystic we can do gate. both. <laughs> All right. Bye. Eat the graveyard soul, first. Soul, soul, yes. Graveyard first. Soul Guy Lantern should be dead. It should be dead. All right, let's go check it. We need help. Help, 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 help. Soul Guide Lantern in play should be dead. I swear I'm missing something. No, I'm pretty sure it destroys artifacts. All righty, well, a nice follow-up turn here for Eric Rose. Finds two creatures. Amtraptor into uh, Guide of Souls. Yeah, I wonder if Ryan was hasty with that Wrath, because the One Ring is protecting you. I mean, you got to figure Eric's not going to extend into the Wrath, I guess, uh, if you don't do it, so you might as well use your mana. I guess that's the, the thinking from Ryan's side. And now the Solitude. Well, uh, Solitude's awkward because it can, the Guide of Souls can jump over top of it and the Amp Raptor attacks into it freely. Yeah, and I think if Rose understands that, he will put the counters on the Guide, which he is. Okay, and now 
we get to chump the raptor, stay at one. And pass turn. So now Ryan can Teferi bounce Amped Raptor. Could also go for a draw off the ring, Teferi bounce ring, find a land, replay it, but he doesn't have a lot of painless lands left in the deck. That's true. I think we're getting uh we're gonna ask a judge question here real quick. So the Guide of Souls, let's get Guide of Souls on the screen because this is where the, the disconnect's happening. So when Guide of Souls attacks, it says uh Choose a creature, I think, or I might say target no, it creature. Says, Whenever you attack, you may pay three energy. When you do, put counters on target attacking creature. So you pay the energy, then another trigger goes on the stack. So Ryan has a window to solitude the Guide of Souls but, uh, after Eric has paid energy, but before the counters go on. Yeah, and I think that that is what happened, but we're just going to get some confirmation on that's how it works. Uh, Guide of Souls is basically two triggers, I think, with the yes. attack ability, which is a little awkward. Wish I just said, whenever you attack with any creature, you may pay three energy if you do, but two one-one counters on target creature you control. Something like that. I'm sure it's templated how it needs to be templated to work properly. I am no expert. All right. Well, we do have to pay the three energy to get the ability. Now, we're going to go back Ryan Hayes' way. One card in hand for Rose, but not a threat. Okay. That's a Galvanic Discharge for Ryan, so now he can discharge the Raptor, draw a card with the ring, and then bounce his own ring with Teferi. Flooded Strand is not going to help. Just needs a Flage. Well, he can just kill the Raptor. That looked like a Lorien revealed. Yeah, looks like we're going to go cycling. Probably just get a land and play tapped. And then we have Galvanic Discharge for the Raptor and Spell Snare for a follow-up. We are vulnerable. We don't have the ring at the ready for protection. So Lightning Bolt or a Haste Creature or something off the top, uh, Flage off the top, all seem pretty good. There's a Meticulous Archive. Going to dig a card deeper. Looks like he doesn't like a Wrath of the Skies. Flage only. Only Flages. Okay, two energy left over after discharging the Raptor. And what can Rose find off the top? I think that's another Amped Raptor, which will draw the Spell Snare. Okay. I think he has Galvan Discharge in hand as well. Oh, maybe it was a Discharge he drew, which is not great. No, it does kill the Teferi, but it's not where you want to be. I guess he just doesn't care about the Teferi right now, so he's going to hold the Discharge. The land also was not a Shrevel land, so he's holding that as well. Arena of Glory, the pickup for Haze. Now if he finds Flage, could bring it back and gain a bunch of life in big bursts. And now Ryan has to decide, does he want to run the ring out to give himself protection from a top-decked haste creature? Or does he want to save it in case Eric draws something like a Guide of Souls? Another discharge? Alright, to fair down. I don't feel like we're going to fight over this at all. Yeah. Pass turn. It's a discharge from Ryan, so now he can cover a haste creature, but not a flage. And not a bowmasters. There's an amp raptor. We know we have the spell snare for it though. That's gonna be the play. I'm gonna pass it back. Rose just can't get through the defense. That's a sparrow's headquarters. We can cycle that one. Yeah, and if we draw nothing, we could just play the ring, but decides to just say go, holding up mana. There's no Johnny. Johnny's a pretty good one. Ryan can Galvanic Discharge the Johnny itself, but the token is still a lethal attacker. If I'm Ryan, I'd definitely cycle in response to the Johnny if you find Spell Snare, but That's there's... That's the Flage! There's the money card, folks. Ryan breathes a sigh of relief. He found it in time. Yep. And Eric Rose looks like he's going to end one painful damage short in this second game. I don't know if you remember the early turns of this game, but Ryan's first three lands were planes, surveil land, island, planes, fetching. Any of those had to be a shock land. We'd be in trouble. Yeah. Flage gains three, puts Haze out of lethal range from opposing Flage up to four. We can Flage again from the graveyard and attack. 
So, whew, Arena of Glory, huh? In this case, I don't think the arena is exactly necessary. Seven would probably be good enough, but it is nice to just end the game quickly. I agree. And and because Ro Rose has another discharge, but because he waited a turn to deal with the Teferi, he only has two energy left over and can't discharge down this Flage. Won't deal with the Flage permanently, but will stop the would have stopped the attack. That should be Ryan up to 10. Should be getting 9 life. And then Rose should be taking... Uh, uh, 12? No, because the first trigger targeted the Ajani token. So it should be 9. Well, there's 3 triggers and 6-6. Six, six, so it's 15 well, damage well, altogether. So, so, and 2 of them target Ajani plus token. Right. And packs it in. Ryan Hayes moves to 5-0. Likely able to double draw into the top 8. Call that back-to-back -to -back top eights on our double modern open weekend with the same Jess guy deck, yeah. and he's looking I, real I, good. I believe he exoed the Swiss yesterday too. That's what I Just think as well. Needs to carry that momentum into the elimination rounds today.